On July 6, 1999, a call was made to the Bridgeport Police Department in Pennsylvania. Kevin had come home from work to find his 20-year-old girlfriend Jennifer stabbed to death on the bedroom floor. The brutality of the scene reflected a crime of passion, and despite investigating Jennifer's closest circle, no leads were found and the case eventually went cold. Six years later, a triple homicide only a few minutes away from Jennifer's house shook the neighbours once again. Sisters Heather and Lisa Greaves, as well as Heather's three-year-old daughter, had been stabbed and slashed just like Jennifer. This time, the investigation led to the arrest of a man, John Eichinger, who confessed to both the triple homicide and the murder of Jennifer six years earlier. All the victims were killed by the same knife, and not only did he get away with Jennifer's murder, but the knife he used on her in 1999 became a Halloween prop he used with his costume for several years. The same knife he would use in 2005 to take three more lives. This is the story of John Eichinger and the women he brutally murdered. Jennifer Louise Still was born on July 4, 1979, in Bridgeport, Pennsylvania. Her childhood wasn't easy. She had been born with a cleft lip and palate, and suffered from scoliosis growing up. Although her treatments were successful and helped her overcome her conditions, Jennifer suffered from bullying during her school years. In 1999, Jennifer was bright and independent. She loved musicals and wanted to become a poet. The 20-year-old was living with her boyfriend, Kevin, who worked at a local car wash. That's where he was going when he kissed Jennifer goodbye on July 6th. That would be the last time he would see her. When he got back from work, he found Jennifer on the bedroom floor, dead and surrounded by blood. When the detectives arrived at the scene, they came face to face with a crime scene so brutal it could only have been done by what they described as uncontrollable anger and rage. There was no sign of forced entry, and the level of brutality suggested Jennifer knew her killer. Several traces of blood were found and collected from the bathroom sink, too far away from the body to be Jennifer's. Since stabbing someone is not an easy thing to do, the aggressors usually end up cutting themselves in the process so the police hoped this spot of blood would potentially lead them to the killer. The investigation of Jennifer's closest circle began. Kevin was cleared out almost immediately. He had been at work all day and had no signs of being cut. So investigators focused on Jennifer's friends, particularly the group the couple played Dungeons and Dragons with. Jennifer and Kevin usually played with friends Heather Greaves and John Eichinger, both friends talked to the police. Heather was cleared immediately, and John stated he had been in New Jersey the day of the murder. He did, however, mention two other friends they played with who were very involved in the D&D game and culture, Danny and Destiny. As investigators dug deeper, they found out Destiny had been in love with Jennifer and was convinced she was possessed by demons. This friend even confessed to having had a dream where she stabbed Jennifer. Now, while Dungeons & Dragons has become wildly popular in the past few years thanks to the references in TV shows, D&D content creators, and the comeback of all things 80s, the truth is, it wasn't always that way. In the 80s there was an actual moral panic surrounding the role-playing game, questioning its links to witchcraft and sorcery, and how people who played it were meddling with the unknown. He has been studying the game for several years and says there are 28 deaths related to Dungeons & Dragons in the last five years. In some of those, it was clearly the decisive element. In other ones, it was just a major element in the thinking of the people at the time they committed suicide or, or murder. The problem seems to be that some kids take it more seriously than others, take it a step further, playing a character who brings them the power in a game they couldn't possibly get in real life. We're so screwed if it's the Demogorgon. It's not the Demogorgon. The Demogorgon! <laughs> We're deep shit. As a D&D player myself, I find these claims ridiculous, and thankfully, after all these years, most people do as well. But in 1999, when Jennifer was 20 years old, there was still a fascination with the idea that D&D was turning players into demonic killers. 
So when the information came out that Jennifer played Dungeons and & Dragons and had friends who talked about her being possessed, the media focused on the idea that this murder had been in some way connected to the in-game universe the group had created. However, when asked to give a DNA sample, both Danny and Destiny agreed. Their DNA was not a match to the sample collected in the bathroom. So with no matches, no potential suspects, and no more leads, Jennifer Still's case became colder and colder. Until 2005. On March 25th of 2005, George Greaves found something horrific when he returned home. His two daughters and granddaughter lay lifeless on the floor. There was blood everywhere. The victims were 23-year-old Lisa Greaves, 27-year-old Heather Greaves, and 3-year-old Avery, Heather's daughter. The murder had taken place just a few minutes away from Jennifer Still's murder, and the resemblance was obvious. The victims were stabbed, their throats were slit, and there was a lot of rage behind the attacks, suggesting a crime of passion. In fact, one of the investigators remembered Heather being questioned during the investigation in 1999, as she had been friends with Jennifer. Although there wasn't much evidence, there was an eyewitness. A neighbour had seen a man walking out of the Greaves' home at the time the murders would have taken place. It seemed that he was bleeding. This was a tight community, so neighbours knew each other. It wasn't hard to identify the man. It was Heather's longtime friend, John Eichinger. Born on February 18th, 1972, John Eichinger had also grown up in the area. He was friends with Heather and Jennifer since they were in their teens, and John had even worked with Heather at a local market for a brief time. When Jennifer was found dead, John had told the police he was out of town. After Heather, Lisa and Little Avery's murder, he had a similar story to tell. After being identified by a neighbour, the police went to talk to John, who insisted he was out of town when the murders took place. John was wearing a bandage around his hand, and he told investigators his dog had bitten him. However, investigators didn't believe him and continued to accuse him of the triple homicide. After making him believe they had DNA evidence which could incriminate him, John cracked and confessed. He had killed Heather, Lisa and Avery. John was in love with Heather and had been for a while. However, Heather wasn't in love with John and had rejected him several times. She was happy with her boyfriend and had no intention of ending things with him. So on March 25th, John called Heather and asked to go over to her house and talk. Heather's birthday was coming up, so she thought he might be coming over with some flowers or a present. However, when John arrived, they got into an argument. Heather had rejected John once again, and he wasn't having it. The argument ended when John pulled out the knife he had taken with him and stabbed Heather in the stomach. Heather's three-year-old daughter Avery had seen it all happen, and as she ran for help, John slashed her neck. Lisa, Heather's sister, had been in another room, and as she came out and saw everything, John stabbed her too. When confessing to the police, John Eichinger spoke naturally about the way he had done things. For instance, he explained how he knew he had to stab in the stomach instead of the chest, as it's easier to reach and puncture organs this way or how he had to kill Avery and Lisa to prevent them from identifying him after what he'd done. But the real moment of truth began when John confessed it wasn't the first time he'd used that knife. While confessing to the triple homicide, John also confirmed he had been the one to end Jennifer Still's life in 1999. Just like with Heather, John had been in love with Jennifer. After being rejected by her several times, he had gone to her house to try and convince her to leave her boyfriend. Jennifer didn't want to be with John, and she was even planning on marrying her boyfriend. Even though John was being so persistent, they were friends, so Jennifer reached over to touch his shoulder and comfort him. But John already had a knife in his hand, and he angrily stabbed her in the stomach before slitting her throat. Police tested the DNA sample found at the scene against John's DNA, and it was a match. They had their killer. But the most unsettling piece of information was yet to come. 
John confessed that after killing Jennifer, he had kept the clothes he wore that day, as well as a knife which he stored in a cooler, along with some rubber gloves. Every Halloween, he would put on a scream mask, the gloves and the knife he had killed his friend with, and would hand out candy at the door. During his trial, John showed no remorse. Even though the question of his mental health was brought to attention, and could potentially be a mitigating factor, the weight of the aggravating factors was greater, and John Eichinger was sentenced to life for the murder of Jennifer Still, and sentenced to death for the murders of Heather, Lisa, and Avery. All through the trials, he didn't speak with the families of the victims when given the chance to, and he showed no reaction when the families confronted him in the courtroom. While in jail, John even published some of his journal entries, where he described in graphic detail how he committed the murders. During the next years, John filed several appeals to try and overturn his sentence, arguing he suffered from brain damage and his defense counsel was ineffective at the time of his conviction. However, all of the appeals have been denied. John Eichinger is almost 50 years old and is currently on death row in Pennsylvania. Thank you for watching this video, as always, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the back of the archive, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.